So the illusion of rarity by I think his name is Space Coder. Space Kodak. Space Kodak? Let me look at that again so I got that right. Yes. Space Coder. The illusion of rarity by Space Coder. So let's let's check out this guy and see what he has to say. Talk about ship availability muted. and rarity and how this system doesn't really work. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. If you would like <laughs> to join their ranks, check out my Patreon or consider becoming a channel member. So, some of you might be asking, Coder, what the heck are you talking about? Well, have you noticed how some ships have limited sales? Most are limited by time, but some ships are limited by numbers sold with each sale. During major sale events like Invictus, there's always a big show, with certain ships being made available in limited numbers in several waves. Now, there is a legitimate balance-related reason behind this. However, it is, is slowly there, being negated with the repeated use of the sale strategy. The official explanation from CAG is that they want to ensure that some ships are present in diverse and very limited numbers. This generally depends on the specific ship. But, for example, it would make very little sense in terms of lore if there were a few thousand javelins flying around. But it's not possible for CAG to set a hard limit on how many can be sold because that would be detrimental to the funding. Also how do you how do you guys feel on the artificial limiting of ships in Star Citizen, like like with uh, like with the javelin and 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 with uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ships that have limited numbers. I think it's, I think the 890 has limited numbers as well, but there's there's a few of them. We know there are. How do you guys feel about CIG actually limiting the numbers? Do you feel that it's both either lore or game breaking to have a few thousand javelins flying around, or do you think it's just more FOMO and panic buying? Uh, I, I feel it's more of the latter than it is the former. I don't like look, I don't think that there should be ten thousand javelins flying around in system, but at it mm, I don't know. That that's a hard one for me to that's a hard one for me to kind of walk the line on because on one side I feel that they should not limit the numbers because the the the, the amount of cash that it takes to buy one of those, what is it, the, the javelin's like what, fifteen hundred? No, the javelin's like what, three thousand and the iterus is fifteen hundred? So it's kind of, you're kind of limiting the crowd that can buy it by simply putting a $3,000 price tag on it. And then the other, on the other hand, um, allowing, so on one hand, let me back that up. On one hand, you have the limiting because you can't have, you know, you can't have 10,000 of these things flying around in system. And then on the other hand, you have the lore. And then on the other hand, do we really need to artificially limit them because it's got a three thousand, you know, fifteen hundred to three thousand dollar price tag on it? To should we limit it? I, I don't know. I, I I'm kind of stuck in a spot with that one because I really think that the price tag limits the sale. But then again, I don't have three thousand dollars to spend on a video game. But I'd, I'd like to know what you guys think. Also, as yeah, we kind of are creating. Um, monetary classes within Star Citizen. As far as I know, the Javelin is only available for sale twice a year and in very limited numbers. We mm -hmm. don't know what the exact number of available Javelins for sale is, but I can tell you that I know quite a few people that own a Javelin, and I'm pretty sure you do too. The Javelin is of course just one example. The Kraken and the Endeavor are in a similar situation. So what's so True bad backspace. about this? Well, CAG justify the cost of these ships by saying that they are extremely rare and create quite an advantage for the owner. But by selling them they're What's the advantage though? Because um, if I'm not mistaken, in order to crew an Iterus or a Javelin, don't you have to have somewhere between 18 and 50 people to crew it? And, you know, look, we might turn a corner with AI and NPCs, but... Do you really want some of the Star Citizen AI NPCs fucking with your ship? Sorry for putting it that way, but do you want them in your ship? Really? Because I don't. They're more likely to break something or get stuck standing on a chair somewhere than actually doing the job I assigned them to do in the ship. So 
still you're going to need what 18 24 50 people somewhere around in that range to actually operate one of these things once power resource management becomes a thing and all the other hoopla that they got planned for large ships you know i don't want the ai in there running my ship i'd be i'd be terrified they're actively destroying that rarity on the other hand this false rarity combined with the fear of missing out and very high pressure limited sale events creates an amazing sales opportunity and no doubt generates a lot of revenue for the project <laughs> so what is the solution now does that mean you're a glutton for comedy or you're a glutton for um punishment When I take a long bong hit of copium, I exhale. I spend more money on car parts and firearms to rationalize my SC buying. Yeah, I have that same problem. Uh, my wife uh, sometimes look in, looks into the uh, the vault. Well, it's not really a vault, but the safe and goes, really? Again? You thought because it came in black, I wouldn't notice it this time? Yeah, well. Oops. Solution. Well, there really isn't one. You could limit the sales to concept release sale and then flight ready release sale. But it's too late for that. The balance is gone and implementing this restriction moving. Oh, oh, I also have another question for you guys. Hmm. Trying to figure out the best way to word this. Do you feel that the price hikes after concepts and closer to um, actual flight or uh, or after it's become flyable uh, is justified. I don't feel that it's justified. I don't think that because I didn't buy it six months ago when it was in concept at, you know, pick a price a hundred dollars. Let's do the, let's do the, the, the vulture, for example, because I didn't buy it when it was in concept six months ago at $150. Why should I be punished? Because now it's flyable you now raise the price to 125. I don't, I don't think that's right. Um, maybe I'm missing something as far as development is concerned, but I don't think that's right. I don't think that I should have to pay a whole bunch of extra money because uh, Star Citizen says so, because it went the flyable now. It's now t worth 25 more dollars because it's flyable. I don't, I don't understand that. Moving forward would be unfair. And you can't just cut off a major source of income. You could limit the available numbers even further, but this only slows down the issue and would ultimately result in even more sales pressure. But now it's important to consider the in-game implications. We know that operating capital ships will be an expensive affair, from crew costs to repair and docking fees. Most capital ships will probably become money sinks, with a few exceptions like mm -hmm. the Orion, Endeavor, and carriers like the Liberator. And this actually offers a double-edged sword that could be considered a solution. The operating costs of rare capital ships might exclude some owners from being able to use them. Which, yeah. in theory, fixes the negating of advantage that these ships are supposed to provide by Finally, making them advantage. less rare. But at the same time, in-game measures locking out someone from using something they paid for is not great. Obviously, many, if not most people who... Honestly, the in-game measures that limit people from playing with these large ships isn't the operating cost right now. It's the frames. It's the frames. Can you imagine what this would be like right now if two or three javelins and two or three Idrises got next to each other in Star, uh, Star Citizen currently? Could you imagine if those six big ships got next to each other right now? Oh. We'll be clicking around and we'll be slide showing along at one frame a second. Own these ships, plan on using them with their org or to rent them out to other players or organizations. However, there is one fatal flaw in this reasoning. It assumes that this will be possible. Now, this feature was discussed many times and somewhat confirmed by CIG, but as with everything, timelines are uncertain and designs might change. And with that being said, that's it for tonight. What do you think? Should CAG stop selling rare ships or should they stop pretending that they are rare? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Fly safe and I will see you in the verse. Thanks, Space Coder. That was a um That was a thought-provoking um that was a thought-provoking video. I'm going to hit a like on that.
That was very thought provoking.